Now let's take a look at regular drawings. In 2009, oftentimes when you clicked on items in a part, you would get left click, pop up, context menus. However, in drawings, these did not happen. This is 2009, and as you can see, by selecting items, no context menu appears. If we switch over to SolidWorks 2010, we'll notice that by clicking on a line, we'll get a pop-up context-sensitive menu containing certain things like open part. However, certain items, such as these center marks, still do not have context menus. There have been a couple enhancements to do with multi-body parts, and this continues into drawings. Here is a multi-body sheet metal part that we'd like to create a drawing of. After dragging in a view from the view palette, the feature manager opens and at the top you can see a drop down menu where you can select configurations. As well, there's a new button called select bodies. This allows you to select certain bodies from the part that you would like to include and that's all that will be included in the drawing view. In SolidWorks 2010, the hide and show edges commands have been combined into a single command. In order to select items to hide or show, it's possible to just click or you can box select items. However, sometimes box selecting will select items you don't want to select. So if you shift and box select, it will only add items to the hiding. And if you alt and box select, it will only remove items. Any other items contained in there will remain as they were. Previously, when creating a section view in a part, you were unable to control the depth of the section view, unlike in an assembly where the depth could be controlled. Now, in SolidWorks 2010, in the Property Manager is a section for section depth. By clicking the checkbox, you will be able to control the section depth by dragging the pink line. This will allow you to include as much of the part as you like, or as little. When right-clicking on a part in an assembly drawing, it is now possible to open either the part or the assembly. In the past, it was only possible to open parts from drawings. This next video looks at aligned section views as well as tangent edges. Here we have an aligned section view which goes across the cylindrical face. In the past, the dimension would not show up as a diametral dimension, but in this release it will show the diameter symbol, recognizing that this is a diameter. Some new options are available for showing or hiding tangent edges. One is the hide ends option, which will hide the ends of all the tangents, leaving only the centers. As well, after we turn that back on, we'll look at the hide and show edges dialog which contains a few more options. Under Tangent Edge Filters, there's an option to hide nonplanar edges. It will automatically select all the nonplanar edges from the part and hide them. Another option is to hide edges shorter than a certain distance. We'll, we'll do three millimeters and it will hide all edges shorter than that. Lastly, we can hide blend edges which will hide edges which are tangent to planar faces normal to the view. Now let's take a look at what's new for detailing drawings in 2010. First of all, we'll look at tables which are now easily navigated using commands like in Microsoft Excel. For example, navigation using Enter, Tab, Shift Enter, or Shift Tab is now available. As well, you can press Delete to erase a cell or backspace before activating the cell for editing. Now let's take a look at adding dimensions. New in 2010, when you left click on a dimension, the dimension palette will appear. This allows you to control the tolerancing and leaders and other such items for a dimension. It combines all this data into a small window right in the graphics area, very easily accessible. You can change the type of tolerancing or the numbers on it. As well, once you've selected your tolerance, 
you can add prefix or suffixes to the dimension or text above or below it. Once you have a setup you like, you can also add it to the favorites. The favorites will allow you to have saved or it will just access the recent ones you've used. Moving over to another part of our drawing, we'll take a look at leaders. By selecting a leader, then clicking on the arrow, you can now select the type of arrowhead straight from the graphics area. On top of that, you're also able to select the size of the arrowhead if you would like it for, to differ from the document size. In the past, when adding center marks to a drawing, it was often required to redimension because the center marks and the dimension lines would overlap. In SolidWorks 2010, center marks have been improved so that they automatically update dimension lines to have the right gap. Also, if a dimension is after, added after the center lines, they will automatically be correctly gapped.